Peggy, 18. We heard them first. Distant thunder, like a storm among the mountains. Iron beasts, tearing through our land, bringing fire and destruction. Violence I couldn't understand. My father held me close and told me that the war would pass. But I could see the fear in his eyes, feel it in his chest. I knew then my life had changed. I hid from their war, hoping it would pass me by. But still, it found me. They faced the monsters that day. And the sounds still follow me, like ghosts beneath the sand. My world was changed forever. But the war touched many lives. And there are many stories to tell. And welcome to the Company of Heroes 3 North African Operation Reveal stream. I'm your host, Imogen Mella, and I'm so excited to be bringing you new gameplay, exclusive interviews, and maybe even a little surprise. You just watched the cinematic trailer for the North African Operation, setting the scene for a dramatic clash in the desert. It's one of two campaigns you'll be able to play at launch, and as the name suggests, takes place during the fighting between the Brits, the Germans, and the Italians in North Africa. We've got a lot to show you today. We'll be talking to the developers at Relic, introducing you to a new faction and its units, and exploring what makes North Africa a distinct battlefield. And if you're obsessed with tanks, I've got some good news. You're going to be seeing quite a lot of them. Look, they've even invaded the studio. Don't worry though, the ones you're going to be playing with are quite a bit larger. But first things first, you've seen the cinematic trailer, so how about we move on to some exclusive gameplay of the first mission?
Allies have engaged the British forces nearby. They're fighting hard, but it's only a matter of time before they're overwhelmed. We need to provide support by pushing forward with our panzers. Move! Pick up those feet! Panzer on standby! My crew needs orders! Orders incoming! Plenty of ground to cover! Waiting on you! Fire smoke canisters to cover our advance. Panzer Grenadiers standing fire. by. The Fox is fine. Panzer Grenadiers relocating. Locked and loaded. Let's move. Orders, crew. Ready, willing, and able. The British anti tank gun is a formidable threat. Eliminate it. I want a grenade on that position! Jawohl! Go right for position! Your first fucking time! Die the flank! Driver! The head full! What do you need? There. Bring up the fences! Get down! Panzer Kratzer! Now! Driver! Threaten up! Keep them in! Don't have a range! This is it! Panzer Grenadiers! Panzer Grenadiers await orders! Marching! With haste! What do you need? I want them to dodge! Punch it in the air! Defend it! Pack! Take it! Load it clear, Commandant! Coordinates received! Weapon crew! Standing by! Where's our Punch it in the air! Punch it in just like that! Watch your ready! It's to kill us! My men are better! We can't do! Double time! As you just saw, things can get pretty hot in the desert. And in the chaos and blisteringly fast pace of battle, you can go from an army to just a handful of wrecked tanks in a few seconds if you're not quick to react. The good news? There are some new units designed to handle just such a disaster. We'll be showing them off more later, but before that, let's learn more about the operation itself and who you'll be playing from the team at Relic Entertainment. We've got two big portions of single player for players to experience. One is the dynamic Italian campaign, and of course the other one, which we're excited to announce today, is the North African operation. The North African operation is a traditional linear story-based campaign reminiscent of our campaigns from Company of Heroes 1 and Company of Heroes 2. They'll be very familiar to returning players to the Company of Heroes franchise and features the Deutsche Afrika Corps on their push back across North Africa against the, the British forces. This new German faction is uh, an excellent opportunity for us to have a look at the German army earlier in the war. Whereas we normally represent the Wehrmacht later in the war as a more dug in and defensive faction, usually on the retreat, the DAC is much younger, far more aggressive and fresh off their successes in the battles in Europe earlier in the war. This faction as well is complemented by a very strong roster of light vehicles. It's an exciting new way of playing the game by having most of your core abilities based around these vehicles. We're very excited to see how players come to use them. 
Yes, they're very mechanized and there's lots of action out there in the North African operation and in the North African theater. Players will see that the map is much more wide open with the deserts and they'll be able to try their tanks out there, get big open tank battles and open, you know, terrain for them to just blow things up. Another reason why adding the deck to our roster is really exciting is because it brings our amount of playable factions at launch up to four, which is double the amount that we launched with in Company of Heroes 2. So there is just so much more content for players to play and units to get their hands on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, it really is. The four playable factions at launch will be the United States Forces, which will be familiar to fans of Company of Heroes 1. Facing off against them in Italy will be the Wehrmacht, the more entrenched and defensive German army later in the war. And then we have the North African factions, the Deutsche Afrika Corps, or DAC, which will be your more aggressive and mechanized army. And against them will be the British forces working with their Commonwealth allies, which is our more well-rounded and robust uh, British force in North Africa. This is the Mediterranean theater. Both sets of content will be available in single player experiences and in multiplayer experiences. So you'll have maps for Italy, of course, and maps for North Africa right away at day one. This all sounds like great news for fans of the original linear campaigns from Company of Heroes 1 and 2. Whether you want a sprawling campaign with a mix of turn-based strategy and real-time tactics, or something that throws you into the real-time action straight away, it sounds like you'll be well taken care of in Company of Heroes 3. And the heavily mechanized Dax seem like the perfect faction for you World War II vehicle aficionados. Right away, you're gonna have so many machines to play with. You're gonna be up to your eyes and panzers in no time. And all those tanks need a lot of room, so the big open spaces of North Africa are an ideal setting for the faction's biggest strength. Before we get to the surprise I've been teasing, we've got some more details to cover. So let's hand it back to the team at Relic to dig into the map's missions and mechanics. So the goals of the DAC in North Africa were to push across North Africa from Libya to Egypt and take control of the Suez Canal. That was, that was their ultimate goal. Rommel came in, you know, after the Allies had pushed them back all the way to Western Libya. And that's where our story kind of starts, is on the DAC's aggressive push back towards Egypt. So in North Africa, we're featuring a bunch of really great historical battles. Um, Ajdabiya, Ghazala, Tobruk, El Alamein. Uh, these were really important victories for the DAC. The way that we approach them is really by doing a bunch of research. We're reading accounts that we can find, we're watching documentaries, we're reading books, we're in some cases, in, in the case of Tobruk, going to Google Earth because you can still see some of the trench lines in satellite photos. Just finding absolutely as much reference as we can to really inform what we're doing. We then take all of that information and try to boil it down into a few key points that we can make into objectives that capture the feeling of what the DAC was doing in these battles. We heard them first. Distant thunder, like a storm among the mountains. So we're telling kind of a, a dual story. In the actual gameplay, you'll experience Rommel. How you'll experience Rommel, that's, that'll be very interesting. And I think, um, you know, it's a difficult line to kind of ride, you know, we don't want to glorify or make Rommel a hero here in any kind of way, even though you will be playing from the German perspective. We took the authenticity and accuracy of Company Heroes 3 very seriously. We realized that when you play the DAC faction that you are playing the Germans and we needed to balance of winning the battles, but still you lose this part of the war. So when you play as the DAC, um, you'll have fun in experiencing the units and the vehicles and the gameplay, but you need to know that coming into this aspect of the game, we're not changing history. You will lose, but at the same time, through other aspects of the storytelling, you're going to experience a really human story from a Jewish Berber family and what happened to them 
and we worked really hard with cultural experts to make sure that what we were doing was um, inspired by and authentic to what happened. In the North African campaign, we're going to follow specifically the story of Salima. And Salima is a young woman who is heavily impacted by the dueling forces of the DAC and the British Allied forces. These are really two forces that should just never have been there. Ultimately, Salima's story is a story of survival and a story of resistance. And it's a common story. It's a story that pops up whenever war happens. It's what the people usually end up having to do, a story of rebellion. And we're going to experience what Salima herself, a 17-year-old girl, has to do, what she feels she has to do in this time. And it's inspired by true events. We talked with a lot of people and heard the real stories and felt that this was something um, that should be told, that people should be more aware of. And, you know, that's the... That's the power of what games can do too. You can be educated in a lot of different ways, find the entertainment in a lot of different ways, and come away with some knowledge and some idea of what really happened there. The British faction in Company of Heroes 3 is uh, going to be your adversary in the North African operation. They're still playable as a faction in the dynamic Italian campaign and in skirmishes and multiplayer. Whereas we would normally portray the British as quite a dug-in and defensive faction, this time we wanted to go for a more well-rounded approach to try and portray them in their exploits in the North African desert. In particular, this time around, the British faction have a slew of powerful medium tanks, including the Crusader cruiser tank, which is among the fastest tanks in the game. If working in pairs, these vehicles can easily outmaneuver retreating enemy vehicles, strike them on their rear armor where they're weakest, and cause pretty serious damage. <laughs> When, when it comes to creating the missions, having the British forces as an enemy, like Will says, they're you know this incredibly robust faction, and, and when we're using them in missions, it, it means that we have a lot of tools at our disposal to kind of create interesting combat encounters. You know, these fast, hard-hitting tanks, you know, we can have kind of these tank battles in the missions and, and really set up, you know, more mobile engagements. In North Africa, we've got some new mechanics that we're introducing very early on in the campaign. Tank riding is one of them, which is going to help you move units around, you know, these big open deserts and these battlefields a little bit more easily. Same with towing. You can tow anti-tank guns or large artillery pieces around to get them to where they need to be on the battlefield. But I also love the, uh, the rooftop combat. Yeah. Because uh, it just, it brings the maps to life a lot. You've got units fighting in the streets, and then you have garrisoned units, and, and you know, you'll see a squad on top of a roof shooting down onto somebody in the street, and it, it just adds so much, I think, texture and flavor to the some of the cityscapes that you are fighting in in North Africa as well. With regards to, to weapon towing in particular, both the DAC and the British forces in Africa have a centerpiece unit which uses towing as, as a main mechanic. For the DAC, they have the Flak 36 uh, anti-air gun, which made its debut in North Africa as a direct fire anti-tank weapon to great success. This hulking anti-tank weapon is towed into the battlefield and deployed where you need it. As a counter, the British forces also have the 17-pounder, which is being towed on a pheasant carriage. In the same way, this massive anti-tank weapon can be deployed where you need it and then detached and left where it's set. The North African operation is a great place for new players to jump into the series. It's a linear, more straightforward campaign, and players will be introduced to these new mechanics you know, early on in that campaign so that they can kind of get a grasp on them before moving on into some of the other modes. In particular, one of the mechanics that we keep on highlighting is full tactical pause. In the same way that they will in the dynamic Italian campaign, you'll still be able to use tactical pause in the North African operation. It makes it a much easier and streamlined way of getting used to the controls, moving units in tandem and then launching them all at once uh, is, is just a great way of learning not only Company of Heroes but real-time strategy. We stand Achtung men, we're moving out! Destroy. Weapon and crew! The, the environments themselves are very very different. 
Whereas in Italy, we have a considerable amount of height and changes in terrain and geography, as well as dense urban spaces like the Italian cities that are quite famous. North Africa has a lot of open spaces. You have rolling deserts, wide open roads, but the villages and towns themselves are also far more sparse. So while the, the ingredients that go into making a map are all very similar, they have a, a very stark contrast in how they play. Usually you'll find in North African environments you have to start building your own defences because there just simply isn't enough for you to use. Whereas in the Italian campaign it's easier to create things like deadlocks in roads by putting small barricades in because the streets are so tight and so narrow. One of the really fun parts of working on missions in North Africa has just been, you know, the different environments that we've been able to incorporate mm -hmm. into Company of Heroes. You know, we've talked about desert, of course, a lot, you know, that, that's what comes to mind, but it's more than that as well. You know, we, we have these kind of these small towns and these highway convoys and rocky plateaus or big, you know, stone formations. There's so much that we can use to really add kind of a lot of flavor and a lot of like context to these maps. And so apart from them just being in great gameplay spaces, they're also beautiful, you know, and I can't wait, you know, for people to, to see, you know, all the work that the artists have put into these maps. They, they really look amazing. It's time to die to kill us! Come to Heroes 3's multiplayer map pool will just have a wide variety of different sizes, locales. We wanted to make sure that we cater to all of our audiences, so we'll be returning with 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4 maps at launch. For the North African maps in particular, what we were aiming for is to still have that element of storytelling. We have maps such as Campbell's Convoy, where you start in what is otherwise a desert canyon, but the centerpiece is a British convoy which has already been ambushed. That little bit of storytelling is usually enough to, to give players a, a nugget of what they're into before they then develop their own story around this narrative. But I could see the fear in his eyes. Welcome back to my Company of Heroes bunker. There's just one more thing we need to cover before I say goodbye, and that's the little surprise I teased earlier. I hope you didn't think I'd forgotten, because if I had, you'd be missing out on your first taste of Mission Alpha. That's right, Relic is giving you the opportunity to play through the mission we've been looking at today. I've already gone through it, and let me tell you, it's such good fun. I can't wait to see how you deal with its final challenge, no spoilers. Mission Alpha will allow you to try out the DAC for yourself and scare the crap out of your British adversaries. Push on relentlessly and try out just a portion of the new troops and vehicles you'll get to experiment with in the new campaign. Also, if you're new to Company of Heroes, don't worry. This mission will explain the basics, so you can spend less time working out what units do and more time sending them into battle. So while you download Mission Alpha, let's take a final trip to our Relic devs, who will tell you everything you need to know and the improvements they've made to the engine, which you'll be able to see for yourself shortly. Oh, and make sure you listen out for some tips. Mission Alpha takes place in Ajdabia. Uh, it is the opening of the, the campaign for the Deutsche Afrika Corps, or the DAC, and takes place as the British forces are attempting to retreat. You as a commander coming in to support Italian forces are attempting to prevent their escape from the area. You'll take control of a very simple but robust force in order to create a stranglehold along the road. This is where that turning point happens, where the Allies have kind of overextended themselves and the Desert Africa Corps, they're coming in now to push them back. The DAC have a lot of really cool tools at their disposal. When it comes to Ajdabia and a few of the different maps that you'll find in North Africa, we're really trying to embrace kind of, you know, this open desert feel. And so things like our new tank riding ability or our ability to tow certain weapons, that's gonna give players this really great mobility to like cross the battlefield as quickly as they can and, and hit the enemy forces where they might not be expecting. There are units that I can't wait for players to see. I've been told to speak specifically about a few, but my favorite personally is the restoration vehicle. I know players love picking it up, and then as they go across the field, they're able to resurrect destroyed tanks that have been left there, the carcass or the husk of that tank. I really enjoy going by and picking those up, restoring that vehicle and putting it back on the battlefield. My favorite part about that is actually picking up vehicles from the opposing force. And so you're able to pick up a British Churchill if it's one out there and bring it back to life and then send it back at your enemy. 
For me, I think it has to be the Panzer III. I like that. I like that little tank. It's punchy. It's fast. You can put a squad of troops on it. Uh, you can give it some upgrades, and it is just, it's an awesome mainline tank, and it looks great with dust all over it. Mission Alpha starts with you coming to the aid of some Italian forces, and that also allows you to have some join your, your army through that mission. The Italian engineers, the Gastatori in particular, are easily one of my favorite units. Equip them with flamethrowers or submachine guns. They can charge straight at any enemy defenses and clear them out in no time at all. So while the vehicles are definitely where the fun is, I still love my infantry combat. As someone who has played against Will a lot recently, I can attest that the flamethrowers are his favorite. He <laughs> likes them a lot. We have defeated the British forces, but more are expected to arrive soon. Company of Heroes 3 will ship on our latest version of our engine, Essence Engine 5, and we've been able to make a lot of advancements over the years. It all started back with Company of Heroes 1, but we've been able to iterate through the various titles we've made over the years to advance the technology. We've done a lot of work in order to embrace and to utilize multi-core systems. So there's been work done not just to our simulation, uh, but also to our physics and rendering systems to be able to spread more work across those cores so that we're really able to leverage those cores for faster frame rates and higher fidelity. So with the North African operation, we're bringing all the elements of traditional Company of Heroes destruction into that theater so that we can see elements of, you know, deformation of terrain, the buildings being destroyed and you know still while those buildings being destroyed you know soldiers are still trying to find combat slots to be able to fire from so all these things work together to bring all the company of heroes experience into that theater our code of experience has been really interesting it's been great to get feedback from our players to be able to understand how can we just make the game a little bit better and so this is where we got feedback about how some of the vehicles looked and we were able to take the feedback and really be able to introduce more elements of weathering, of grit, of damage, to really be able to create a more visual representation of vehicle damage and wear and tear through the battles that you'll experience. So destructible buildings, destructible foliage, all those things combined together with the vehicles and units moving around for just a more like enriched destruction environment. So that's what makes today really exciting, being able to put the game in players' hands. So please go to companyheroes.com and check out the Mission Alpha for Company of Heroes 3. Thanks again to the team at Relic for the lowdown on everything we've covered today. Well, I'm sure you're now wondering how you can get your hands on the mission, but don't worry, I got you. Just head on over to community.companyofheroes.com. Sign up for co-development and then link your Steam account on the rewards page. Once you've done that, you can claim your demo. And if you played any of the alpha previews, you'll already have Mission Alpha in your Steam library. In case you missed it, we now have a release date for Company of Heroes 3, so you can play it this year on November 17th. The war touched many lives and there are many stories to tell.